Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Zoe and I'm a third year medical student bringing to you the anatomy of the larynx. In this part, we are focusing on the membranes and the muscles that make up the larynx, as well as what innervates them. To keep this video compact, I will not go into any detail of the individual muscles, but more of an overview. So let's get started right away with the membranes. Two easy ones to remember are the thyrohyoid membrane and the cricothyroid membrane. The membrane from the hyoid to the thyroid cartilage, the membrane from the thyroid to the cricoid cartilage. It's in the names. The thyroid membrane is pierced by the vessels and nerves that supply the larynx. The vocal folds here are thick foldings of mucous membranes. The movement of these is controlled by ligaments and muscles. The cords do not simply move together and apart to produce sound, but rather in a rippling motion as seen in this clip. This happens when the pressure builds up behind the closed cords and is forced out. From this angle we can see the epiglottis, as well as the superior aspects of the cuneiform and corniculate cartilages. The anterior commissure is the point at which the vocal cords meet anteriorly. The word commissure means joining together. The posterior commissure forms the base of the rima glottidis and is the soft tissue between the arytenoid cartilages. These are important because combined with the true vocal cords, they make up the glottis. The vocal cords are not to be confused with the vestibular folds, or false vocal cords. These membranes lie just superior to the true vocal cords and mainly have a protective function. However, interestingly, they are used in very deep throat singing. There are too many muscles in the larynx to go into in this video. However, it is important to know that they all function to tense, relax, adduct or abduct the vocal cords. They are all skeletal muscle and are all supplied by the vagus nerves and specifically the recurrent laryngeal branch. The exception to this is the cricothyroid muscles, which are supplied by the superior laryngeal nerve. The recurrent laryngeal nerve is clinically important due to its passage up the superior chest, where it can be damaged by lung tumours. This nerve damage can cause paralysis of the corresponding cord, leading to hoarseness. So that's all in our quick tour of the larynx's membranes and muscles. If you'd like to test out your new knowledge, uh, please take my mini quiz and see how much you've learned. Thank you very much for watching.